Okay, all praise to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. Um, tonight's topic is called Managing Time. Managing Time. Let's open up with the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Let's start there. You know what? Mm. Before we get that, actually, before we get that thing, before we get that, give me the book of Tobit. Okay, give me Toby 12 real quick. Toby chapter 12. Something is just in the spirit. It's really bothering me. Give me Toby 12. Let's start at verse 6. Read that. The book of Toby chapter 12 verse 6. Go ahead. Then he took them both apart and said mm -hmm. unto them, Bless God, praise him and magnify him and praise him for the things which he has done unto you in the sight of all that live. Read. It is good to praise God and exalt it is what? him. It is good to praise God. It is good to praise God. This is the this is what Toby is saying right here. It is good to praise God. Go ahead. And exalt his name. And do what? And exalt his name. And exalt his name. It's good to praise God and exalt his name. Go ahead. And honorably to show forth the works of God. Uh -huh. Therefore, be not slack to praise him. Be not what? Be not slack to praise him. Be not slack to praise him. Here's what I'm picking up. You understand? Whenever we pray, you see, I've said, I've, I've talked about this before. Whenever we send up the prayers to the Most High, when we say hallelujah as a congregation, put some energy in it. But a lot of you, you don't believe in this book. I'm going to tell you straight. A lot of you, you don't believe this Bible. You are here, but you don't believe nothing this Bible says do. You understand? You have fringes, bar of blue, but you don't believe this Bible. You understand? You don't believe it. The way you praise in the Lord is like somebody is forcing you to do it. You don't have the spirit of joy. You understand? The spirit of joy is not there. It's like the graveyard shift. You understand? It's not there. Read that thing again, verse 6. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 6. Come on. Then he took them both apart and said unto uh -huh. them, Bless God, praise him, and magnify him, and praise him for the things which he hath done unto you in the sight of all that live. Read. It is good to praise God and exalt it his is, name. It is good to praise God. It is good to praise God. You can be hearing all oh, praises, all oh, praises. Listen, you better praise the Lord your God. You better praise the Lord your God. A lot of you, you take for granted why the reason why you're here. A lot of you, you don't believe this book. You think you are here because you deserve to be here. That's why when it's come to praise the most High God, all of us as a congregation, we must be on one accord. But you don't put energy in it. You know why? Because you just faking the funk. You just waiting for something evil to happen. And you're going to use that as an escape goat to go back into the world. I'm going to tell you straight up. You better sit down and examine yourself and say, why do I have such a, why do I have such a dull spirit when it comes to the Lord? You better ask yourself that question. You understand? Because the time is at hand. The son of man is about to make his second coming. You better get your mind right. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of Luke. Okay. Give me Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. Oh man, this thing. Really like it really gets on my nerves. Oh my God, man. Man, Luke 24. Luke chapter 24 and verse 31. Watch this. This is the spirit our forefathers had. You know what? Read verse 17. Then we're going to jump to verse 31. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 17. Go ahead. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are said? You see, and as ye walk and are said? Listen, a lot of you, you don't know what time it is because you don't watch the news, you don't study, you don't see where we at. You understand? Of all the classes that have been coming out, you don't know where we're at. You're still dragging your feet. You want to be cuddled. You want, we want, you want to be treated like a jukebox. That's not happening here. Okay? You better praise the Lord your God. You better, you better pray for the spirit of joy. Because a lot of you, you don't have that spirit. 
the spirit of joy. You better pray for it. Pray them for the Lord to give you that spirit of joy. Okay? Because, oh my God, man. That spirit really like it will just set the whole tone. Read verse 31. Watch this. Luke 24 verse 31. Go ahead. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him. Uh-huh. And, he, and he vanished out of their sight. That's when Christ rose. Okay, that's rose the third day on the Sabbath. Read on. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? You see what he said? And by the way, the whole day, that's what Christ was doing. If very early in the morning, that's what he was doing. Read verse 24, verse 1. Watch this. Very early in the morning, this is what Christ was doing. He was expounding unto them the scriptures, beginning at Moses. The whole day, he was going over scriptures with them. You see what they are saying? He says, was not our, did not our hearts burn within us while we talked with us by the way? And while he opened unto us the scriptures? Because guess what? They were clear that he was there and he was expounding the scriptures unto them. They did not have, because he checked them. He checked them. He says, what the hell is this? As he walked and I said, what is wrong with you? That's what he was saying right there. Because joy is, that's the fruit of the spirit. If you don't have that joy, which some of you don't, guess what? You don't have that fruit of the spirit. You better pray the Lord. Pray to the most high to give you that thing. Because if you don't praise the Lord the way he's supposed to be praised, guess what? The bears will do it. Those that are not even in this truth, the Lord will bring them in. They will do it. You understand? Read that thing. 24 verse 1. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 1. Go ahead. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they very came early, unto the sepulcher. Very early in the morning. So the time that we discovered years ago, it was very early in the morning. So the whole day, that's what Christ was doing. And guess what? From that morning when he met with them, he was like looking at them like, what's wrong with you? Why are you sad? Because you're supposed to know the scriptures. You're supposed to know what the prophets had said. You're supposed to know what the law said, what Moses said in the law about that Christ will come, Christ will be born, and he will be crucified, and the third day he will rise. The prophets, they said it, it's in the law, it's in the Psalms. So there's no reason for them to have been sad. Guess what? The same thing that was going on back then is happening today. We're reading in the scriptures that Christ is going to make his second coming. You see what's going on in the earth. The Lord is waking us up. We bethink ourselves. We know we are Israel. There's no doubt we know we are Israel. Guess what? That's not enough. You see what I'm saying? It's not enough that you just know that you are Israel. This Bible is about change. I tell you straight. This Bible right here is about change. You cannot be that same grimy Negro that you was in the world. You come into the truth. You are still the same grimy Negro. You understand? There's just this negative energy about you. You have to be forced to praise the Lord. I mean, really, you, do you understand that? Give me Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. But when it comes to the things of the world, don't nobody has to force you to have joy. Read that. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Come on. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Go ahead. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink uh -huh. the sweet. Really? And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Mm -hmm. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Stop right there. Neither be ye sorry. Don't be feeling sorry for yourself. You understand? Being looking sad with that negative energy. Don't nobody can be around you. What the hell is this? I mean, really. We are in the, listen, this is the, we are in the final hours of the day. You get that? He says, I'm going to come as a thief in the night. The thief is not going to tell you when he's going to pay you a visit. A lot of you, you still be dragging your feet. You're looking sad. You, listen, you better turn that frown upside down. Okay, read. Neither be ye sorry, for mm -hmm. the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see that part right there? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, that's, you see joy is a strength. Let me say that again. Joy is a strength. The joy, of, if you have joy in the Lord, that's your strength right there. Because whatever is going on, you will praise the Lord your God. And you have a big smile on you. You know why? Because you understand what the Lord has done for you. The Lord could have walked in somebody else. 
but he he walked he, the reason why you're here is because the lord called you in here but now you are in here you are just this ragamuffin you don't want to smile you have no joy when it comes to praise the lord you don't praise the most high mm. give me sarah one ecclesiastes chapter one Sirach chapter 1 and verse, read Sirach chapter 1 verse 18. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 verse 18. You know what? No, no. Mm -mm. Start at verse 11. Let's read verse 11 and 12. Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 verse 11. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and, and crown of, and gladness. And gladness. That's a, that's a, that, that thing right there, that is the fruit of the Spirit. That's a gift of the Most High. Gladness. Go ahead. And the crown of rejoicing. A crown of rejoicing because the joy of the Lord is your strength. This scripture is supposed to bring joy to your heart. That I'm getting myself right. You know what? I don't, I don't want to be distracted. The time is at hand. I got to get myself together. Prepare for the second coming of the Lord. Get my act right. The fruit of the Spirit which fruits of the spirit do I not have? You have to examine yourself. Mm, I don't have that spirit right there. Yes, these are the fruits of the spirit, but I don't have one, two, three, four, five. What is wrong with me? Why am I not applying? Why is it, how is it that I don't have joy in this truth? How come it feels like a, it, it, it feels like a heavy load on my shoulder? Why is that? Why every time when I have to be doing the things of the most high, I be procrastinating, touching there, touch. Listen, you don't have joy. You don't have joy. You're supposed to have joy because this is your safety net. Okay. Read verse 12 now. Come on. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. Mm -hmm. You see that part and right there? Hold on. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. If you fear the Lord, you'll apply his commandments and that will bring joy and merry to your mind. You understand? Read. And giveth joy. And what? And giveth joy. The fear of the Lord is going to give you joy. That's a gift. Joy is a gift of the Lord. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Go ahead. And gladness. And what? And gladness. And gladness. He's mentioning it again that like we read in verse 11. You understand? It says, and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. Go ahead. And a long life. Because some of you, you don't want that long life. You want to die. You want to die early. You want to die young. Why? Because you are burdening yourself with things that you're not supposed to be burdening yourself with. Okay? You're just refusing to have that spirit of the, the spirit of joy when it comes to praising the Lord. You see what I'm saying? It says, and a long life. Hmm. Watch this. This class is about to go left. Hmm. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 30. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 21. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 21. Go ahead. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Hmm. And afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. You see what he's saying? Because you ignore the counsel of the Lord, you choose your own counsel because you are your own God. The, you, don't, you don't worship the God of this Bible. You worship you because you are your own God. That's why you will ignore the counsel of the Lord that will bring joy to your life. You counsel yourself with your own thought process, with your own sick mind. Read that again. Verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness mm -hmm. and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Don't afflict yourself with your own counsel. But the key, the key is, give not over thy mind to heaviness, meaning stress, depression. Don't give your mind to that. The, this is the joy of the Lord is your strength. The fear of the Lord is going to bring gladness to your life. And it's going to give you long life. It's going to give you the spirit of joy. You are among brothers and sisters. You understand? Read. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. The gladness of the mind. The gladness of the mind is the life of man. There's nothing precious. There's nothing more precious than peace of mind. You can't buy that thing. Okay, go ahead. 
and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. You live longer because you apply, you have the spirit of joy. You, are, you see what I'm saying? And the Lord like a cheerful spirit. The Lord like that thing. You know, because you have an angel next to you. Your angel just be depressed the whole day because of you. I mean, huh? Yeah, the, the angel just be writing, this nigga right here, this Negro right, he's always depressed. She's all, this sister, she's always depressed. She's always thinking deep all the time. But guess what? She's got the scriptures be, before her. He's got the scriptures before him, but that spirit of joy is not there. When you, because during prayer, I can, I can tell that a lot of you, you don't believe this book. You don't believe it because you don't apply it. Because you're supposed to have joy. That's the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> okay? That's the law. That's the commandment. You don't have the spirit of joy. You are not keeping the, you are in the midst of sin. You don't have the spirit of joy. To praise the Lord. Hmm. Go ahead. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. You see what the Lord is saying? Hold on. Wait, wait. Love thine own soul. Hmm. That's heavy right there. Love thine own soul. How are you going to be able to love your own soul when you don't... Hold this. Give me Proverbs. Okay. I'm telling you, this class is about to go left. I don't think I'm going to get to my class. Lord's will. One second. Give me one second. Give me Proverbs chapter uh, 15, I believe. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 32. Go ahead. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. Despises his own soul. You know, he didn't say, he didn't say hate. He says despise. You see, despise is a strong word. Hate, yes, yes, it's hate. But when he said despise, that means detest, abhor. You understand? He that refuseth instruction, the instruction is what? Give me that in Romans 2 verse 18. Real quick. Romans 2 verse 18. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Go ahead. And knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. You see what the, you see the will of the Lord is found out of where? Out of the laws of God. But he says what? If, if you want to know the will of the Father, you must be instructed out of God's commandments. But the key is, it says being instructed out of the law. So go back to Proverbs 14, 15 now, verse 32 again. Proverbs 15, verse 32. Read that. The book of Proverbs 15, verse 32. He that refuseth instruction despised despiseth his own soul right but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding he says he that refuses instruction remember we are instructed out of god's commandments you despise your own soul meaning you hate yourself you see the level of self-hatred is so deep in israel that it's not talked about the level of self-hatred is very deep in israel you understand but he says, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Understanding of what? The scriptures. What to apply, when to apply it, and why you are applying it. Because you know the consequences of it if you don't apply. Okay? So now, watch this. Go back to Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 30. Sirach 30 verse 23. You know what? Give me Proverbs 8. Before we go any further, give me Proverbs 8 verse 32. Watch this. You're going to read down. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. Therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. You see what he's saying? Blessed are they that keep my ways. One of the ways, when you keep the ways of the Lord, one of the fruits of the spirit of you keeping the ways of the Lord is what? The spirit of joy in your heart. Go ahead. Hear instruction and be wise. Mm -hmm. and refuse it not and refuse it not remember this is not the first time i raised this thing up but clearly brothers and sisters one ear out the other you don't apply this thing listen this is one of the fruits of the spirit you understand joy joy a merry heart 
You understand? It says, hear instruction because you are instructed out of the laws of God and be wise. That's when you're going to get wisdom because the laws of God are being given to you. And guess what you are doing? You are applying. Then you get wisdom. It says, refuse it not because if you do, you hate yourself. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Mm -hmm. Watching daily at my gates. Hold on. He says, blessed is the man that heareth me. Because you're going to hear the Lord through the prophets bringing the word out. It says, watching daily at my gate. Who's at the gates? Okay. It says, watching daily at my gates. Give me that in, give me that in Deuteronomy 16. Verse 18. Watching daily at my gate. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verses 18. Go ahead. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. So at the gates, you're going to find judges and officers, the leaders, read. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. You see that part right there? And they, the judges and the officers, which is the leadership, they shall judge the people with just judgment. Meaning they're going to bring the scriptures out and there's problems, they're going to judge the matters righteously. That's what it means, just judgment. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Proverbs 8. Okay, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. Read that again. The book of Proverbs chapter 8, verses 34. Go ahead. Look at the man that heareth me. Mm -hmm. Watching daily at my gates. Doing what? Watching daily at my gates. Daily, 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 meaning what? You seek the you you deal with you talk to leadership on a daily basis. Because guess what? You are studying, you need to think that there's things you want to understand. That's what this is going into. Watching daily. Some of you don't do it daily, you do it when you feel like it. Listen, the time is at hand. Understand that. Go ahead. At my gates. Mm -hmm. Waiting at the post of my doors. Doing what? Waiting at the post of my doors. Waiting at the post of my doors. So when it says waiting, because the people must do what? The people must come and learn. You understand? The people must ask questions. You see, a wise student, you know what they will do? Watch this. Because you realize that, you know what? Is this me? I don't have the spirit of joy and gladness. I have the spirit of depression and what? And stress and worry and all of such things that are what? That are detrimental to my spirit. You go, but you know what? Don't nobody going to say, how do I get rid of this thing? How do I get rid of this spirit of being a grimy Negro or a grimy Negress? What must I do? Where must I go in the scriptures to apply to get rid of this demon? Not one have I had. None of you have done that, but I see you have that, you have that spirit, but you don't want to say nothing. You don't want to do nothing about it. You understand? You're going to spread that misery in the congregation. That's why this has to come out. Go ahead. Verse 35. Go ahead. For whoso findeth me, findeth life. And shall obtain favor of the Lord. You shall what? And shall obtain favor of the Lord. You shall obtain favor of the Lord. So he says, for, because whoso findeth me, findeth life. Because if you are finding something, that means you are searching for it, right? It's not going to land on your lap. You must seek. You, you will find it. Meaning you must search the scriptures daily so that you can what? You can find life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. The Lord will show you favor. You understand? Go ahead. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. But he All that, that hate Hold on. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Meaning what? You destroy your own self. Self-hate. That's what we read in Proverbs 15, verse 32. Go ahead. All they that hate me love death. All they that hate me love death. Because if you hate the Lord, what do you think you're going to get in return? You will not be rewarded with good. You will be rewarded with evil. Because the Lord will send evil your way. You understand? Go back to Sirach now, chapter 30. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 and verse 23. Watch this. 
the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verses 23. Go ahead. Love thine own soul. Do you see that part right there? Love thine own soul. How do you do that? You keep the ways of the Lord. You understand? You keep the you don't refuse instruction like we read in Proverbs 15. You don't refuse instruction. That's how you love your own soul. Go ahead. And comfort thy heart. And comfort your heart. Give me that in Romans 15, verse 4. And comfort your heart. Okay. Romans 15, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written for time, were written for our learning, mm. that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see what he's saying? That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, the scriptures are there to comfort you, so that you can have what? Faith, because that's what hope goes into. You have faith. Comfort. The scriptures will comfort you. Why? Because you'll see that, you know what? This spirit is not a good, this is an evil spirit, this is a demon. Because it's trying to take away joy in my life. So now you pray to the Lord, you apply. Because yes, you must pray, but you must apply what is coming out. To get rid of that spirit of being a grimy Negro. You understand? Always just depressed all the time. You see what I'm saying? Because... You are not making changes in your life. You're not applying the Bible to bring change to your life. This Bible is about change. And change is hard because we are so good. We have gotten ourselves used to what? We're used to living a, a, you know, a mediocre lifestyle. Now, when you come into this truth, you want to continue that, but you just want to hide behind the fringes. No, no, mm-mm. no, unacceptable. We're not going to allow that thing to go down. Why? Because we must have that spirit of joy. When we come together, that's where the comfort comes in. You understand? So these are things that are supposed to make you look forward to when we gather together as a congregation, like we do every night. That's supposed to bring joy to your life. That's supposed to motivate you. That's supposed to give you strength and say, you know what? Whatever going on, whatever ish going on in the world, I know the most High God is with us. We're gathering together. And every day we meet as a congregation, we go over scriptures, we learn to improve ourselves, to get our minds right. But as long as it's just another, yeah, it's just some, something we do at half past seven, you're missing the whole point of this. You will not find favor of the Lord because you're not going to understand. You're not going to see the fruits of the spirit. You're not going to even see that there's something wrong in my spirit that I need to change so I can get the spirit of joy. You see what I'm saying? Now, go back. Ecclesiasticus again. Sarak 30, verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verses 23. Go ahead. Love thy own soul Mm -hmm. and comfort thy heart. Read. Remove sorrow far from thee. Remove what? Remove sorrow far from thee. He says, remove sorrow far from thee. How do you do that? Remember, it says, and comfort thy heart. You study. You speak to the brothers and sisters in the congregation. You see, the reason why I'm bringing this up again, because we are at last about this. A lot of you, you just want to still want, you still that individual light. You understand? You still that lone something, that lone wolf. Listen, you don't call the, none of the brothers in the congregation. You understand? You don't call for counsel. Listen, say, I'm dealing with the spirit of depression, such and such. But you pretend everything is all good. You understand? It's, it's amazing how the classes go out, right? And on the day of the class, everybody say, yeah, oh, oh, praises to the Most High. That was glorious. The next day is like it never happened. One year out the other. You, you understand that? So the Lord is coming, he says, remove sorrow far from thee. You understand? Because sorrow of heart, you see sorrow of heart, sorrow of mind, stress. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 65. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 65. Mm-hmm. 
and among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Read. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Mm -hmm. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. You see what he's saying? It's a trembling, a trembling heart, meaning what? You scare all the time. And failing of eyes, meaning you don't see the things that you're supposed to see. The Bible is right there, but you can't understand. You can't perceive what it's saying. You understand? And sorrow of mind, stress. Oh, remember, this is the judgment that will come upon us as a people. You understand? These are the judgments that will come upon us. Why? Because we broke the laws of God. As a punishment, these are some of the judgments. Stress. You understand? Trembling of heart. Fearful all the time. Failing of eyes. You don't see what you're supposed to be seeing in front of you. You understand? Meaning what? The Lord has blinded our eyes. So the Lord says, I'm going to give you sorrow of mind in the land of your captivity. So the solution that the Lord brought was what? Give me Zephaniah 2 verse 1. This is the solution. Okay. This was the solution that the Lord said, okay. When now you wake up, when I wake you up, okay. And you go into that Bible. These are the things that you must do in order for you to what? To manage your stress levels. Watch this. Zephaniah 2 verse 1. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. You see what the Lord is saying? Gather yourselves together, yea. Gather together, O nation not desired. Because when we gather together, what happens when we gather together? Give me that in Psalms 133, verse 1. Psalms 133, verse 1. This is what happens when we gather together and the most high God, that's what he wants. So if you are still, because a lot of you, you are still moving that like that individual light. Like, so now that spirit of depression, that spirit of being that grimy Negro, you're still walking around with it. You understand? Read that. Psalms 133 verse 1. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Read. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see that thing? It says it is a pleasant thing for brethren to dwell together in unity. Because when we come together, what unites us? The laws of God. God's, this Bible brings us together because we are moving in the same spirit and the same mind. So that unity of the brethren, that brings joy, that beautifies the most high. Watch this. Sirach 25 and 1. We went over this before, but clearly it did not stick. It didn't sink into the ears. So we have to go over some of the things. Some of these precepts, we've, we've touched on them, but there are new ones. Watch this. Sarah 25 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25 verse 1. Mm -hmm. In three things, I was beautified. I was what? I was beautified. I was beautified. The Lord is going to tell you what makes him beautiful. What beautifies him. Watch this. Read and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. Uh -huh. The unity of brethren. The unity of brethren. That's what brings joy to the Lord. That's what beautifies the Most High. When we come together, and what brings us together is this Bible we apply, we have the spirit of joy, you understand? The brotherhood, the sisterhood, all of that, that's what beautifies the Most High. And those are the hardest things for Israelites to do, by the way. Let me say that again. Those are some of the hardest things for Israelites, men and women, to do in this truth. Joy. Having that brotherhood. No envy, no strife, no secret hate for the brother or for the sister. None of that. That's one of the hardest things for black men and black women to do. And those are the things that the Lord says, these things, they beautify me. You understand? The unity of brethren. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. We love one another. You understand? According to the scriptures. Read. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. Meaning what? This is the foundation for nation building. You understand? Because when the man and a wife agree together, the house will be in order. The wife will know her role and she'll submit to it. The husband will know his role. He will submit himself to that role. Guess what? The two of them, they are one spirit. When they have children, guess what? The children will have the spirit of joy because they are seeing that mother and father, they agree in one. They 
or they are agreeing one, you understand? They have the same mindset. So when they grow up also, guess what they will do? Those are the type of relationships they're going to be looking for. And guess what? Those are the type of things they will expect from others as well. Because they know how to behave or conduct themselves accordingly. So that's how we build the nation. And then guess what? We, we raise strong children, strong sons and daughters, you understand, in this truth. And their joy is in the Lord. So as a nation, that's where healing comes from. You see, laughter, is, is, laughter is healing. Laughter, joy. That thing is medication. You understand? And that's a gift from the most high. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Okay? Deuteronomy 28 verse 66. The book of Deuteronomy 28 verse 66. Read. Right? And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt fear day and night. And shall have none assurance of thy life. You shall have no assurance of thy life. Meaning what? Your life will hang in doubt. You always, you something will always be going on. Something just something. There's always something. You understand? There's always something going on. You understand? Your life is going to hang in doubt. You're not going to be sure of nothing. You understand? And thou shalt fear day and night. Every, you are just fearful. You understand? You are fear, afraid I'm going to lose my job. You are afraid I'm going to get sick. You are afraid this, this, whatever, 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 whatever. It says, and shall have none assurance of thy life. You are always unsure. They, you don't have the spirit of confidence in you. You understand? Read. In the morning, thou shalt say, would God it were even? You see what he's saying? In the morning, you're going to wish it was in the evening. Go ahead. And... At even thou shalt say, would God it were morning? You wish in the morning, in the evening, you wish it was in the morning. Go ahead. Meaning everything is just upside down in your life, in your mind, the way you think, because these are the judgments. But the Lord gave us solutions. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When you repent, these are the things that you must do. You must have the spirit of joy. You must apply yourself. Go ahead. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. You see what he's saying? It says, you're going to have fear in your mind, and it says, for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Guess what? You're always going to be fearful of anything and everything. Everything that you see, hear, and smell, you're going to be fearful. You're always afraid. You're always uncomfortable all the time. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is not your strength. Because you cancel yourself, you cancel, you cancel your, you afflict yourself with your own cancel. You understand? Let's go back. Sirach chapter 30. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 and verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 verse 23. Read. Love thine own soul mm -hmm. and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. Remove. It says, rem hold on. It says, remove it. Don't hold on to it. Because some of you, you are holding on to sorrow and stress like you're going to receive a reward or something. Listen, you better let that thing go. Let it go. Go ahead. For sorrow has killed many. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? For because sorrow, meaning stress, has killed many. Stress has killed many. Our people, that's why today you've got people that are having heart attacks. What is that? Stress. Heart attack. It says, for sorrow has killed many. Depression has killed many. You understand? Lack of joy has killed many. Because now, everything, listen, everything is just if you everything you look at is just negative you are just negative about everything you don't have you are not optimistic you are always a pessimist all the time you understand that's a bad that's a red flag right there that's a red flag right there go ahead for sorrow 
had killed many. And there is no profit therein. And there is no profit therein. Of course, what is the profit? Death. Because it's telling you right here, it says, for sorrow had killed many, and there is no profit therein. Watch this. Give me that. I think it's in First Peter's. Okay. It's in First Peter's chapter. Let me look at it. First Peter's. This is what the Lord has commanded each and every one of us to do. Okay. But a lot of us, we don't do it. Yes, we might pray about it, but we don't believe that the Lord will fix it. You understand? We don't believe it. Watch this. First Peter 5 verse 7. First book of Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Go ahead. Casting all your care upon him. Mm -hmm. For he careth for you. You see what he's saying? Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Listen. Whatever you're dealing with. You better give it to the Lord. We might give you script, we will give you scriptures and all, but if you don't, if you still don't apply what the scriptures are saying, guess what? And you must cast all your care upon him because we all have issues, you understand? And those issues, we're supposed to go before the Lord and cry to the Lord about these things. And when the Lord will give you answers, how? When the classes come out, you understand? That's when the Lord will say, okay, the class is going to go like this. So somebody else is dealing with X and Y. Guess what? You take those scriptures, you apply them, and as you pray, you apply, pray and apply. As you pray, you are applying what you are, well, what, what, what you are praying about. You understand? Guess what? Then the most high God will remove that sorrow from your mind. Will remove that, that uh, will remove, will remove that depression from your spirit. But your mind must be on the Lord. And the most High God is, that's why he says we must have a congregation. We must have a congregation. Why? Because we, we bear one another's burdens. Give me that in Galatians 6. Galatians, okay. We bear each other's burdens. Watch this. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2. The book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens. Mm-hmm. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Because Christ, he, Christ, the burden that he carried was what? When he died for all 12, all the 12 tribes of Israel. When he, when he sacrificed himself for us, that's what he did. He says, bear ye one another's burdens because that's what Christ did for us. So we must do for each other. We must bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's how we do it. But you just sitting there in the corner somewhere, you dying by yourself, you, guess what? Obviously, you don't believe this Bible. You don't believe it. Because you think you're going you're gonna to fix it on your own. So where is the spirit of joy in that? Because when, 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 when you seek counsel about whatever it is you're dealing with, guess what? The scriptures come out, counsel comes out, and that spirit leaves you. And that's what the Lord wants. To, so we can bear one another's burdens. You understand? So the spirit of joy comes in when you know that, you know what, whatever I'm going through, I'll call up leadership. They will go over scriptures with me. They will comfort me as it is based on what is written. And guess what? And guess what? That load will be taken off my shoulder. But as long as you're still walking around with these, all these bags, you don't want to let them go. Philippians 3 verse 13. Watch this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. The book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. This one thing I do, but forgetting those things. But this one thing I do, but this one thing I do. Go ahead. But this one thing I do, mm -hmm. forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You see what he's saying? He says, forgetting those things which are behind. So the things that have, have, have happened, because some of you are still carrying things that have happened and you are mixing them. Now, now you are in the truth. 
instead of because you don't apply those old things, you are still carrying them around. You're not a new creature in Christ. So you are still carrying those things around. You understand? And you're going to be saying, nobody cares for me. You know, nobody cares how I feel. Nobody, all of that. You'll be saying all of those things on your own to yourself. You understand? You'll be saying that because why? You are carrying these things when the Lord said, remove sorrow far from thee. He says, remove it. Why are you walking around? Why are you walking around with that sorrow for? Watch this. Here's, a, here's, a, here's, 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 here's the thing that a lot of you say to yourself. Give me the book. Give me Ecclesiasticus, okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter, let me see. Yeah, Sirach 20, Sirach chapter 20, Sirach 20 verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 and verse 16. Come on, come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 verses 16. Go ahead. The fool saith, I have no friends. Stop right there. This is a lot of you say, you see, I don't have no friends. Now I'm in this truth. You understand? Now there's so many restrictions. I have so many. That, that thing alone is bringing stress to your life. Because he says, now I can't even deal with the people in the world anymore like I used to anymore. One not saying don't deal with them, but deal with them according to knowledge. Because the friends you're supposed to have is the ones in this truth. Watch this. You see, that's the, you see the Mosa, the Mosa is a genius. He will force you to make friends in the truth. You understand? That is based on what is written. Because that friendship is solid. You understand? That's a solid friendship because you know you can depend on a brother. You can depend on a sister. And it's not just going about, okay, I don't have food or I can't pay my rent, or, no, no, just normal day-to-day -day things, you understand, I'm stressed out about work, you call up the brother, and the stress disappears, you go back, you do what you have to, because we're in captivity, we, we must maintain ourselves, give me John 15 now, John 15 verse 12, we're coming back here, we're coming back, we're going to go back to Sirach, but I need you to read this thing, watch this, the book of John chapter 15 verse 12, this is my commandment. You know what? You love... Hold on. This is my commandment. Wait, wait. You know what? Start at verse 11. You know what? Start at verse 10. Mm. Start at verse 9. Yeah? Start at verse 9. Let's read verse 9 down. Read. The book of John chapter 15 verse 9. Go ahead. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So now, this is Christ speaking. He says, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you, because he died for us. Continue ye in my love. Give me that in John 15. I mean, John 14, verse 15. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see that thing? That's why it says, continue in my love. Keep the commandments. Go back to John 15 now. Read verse 10. The book of John verse, 10, verse 10 explains verse 9. He clarifies it in verse 10. Go ahead. The book of John chapter 15 verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You see what he's saying? If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. So he's, he's clarifying verse 9. Go ahead. Even as I have kept my father's commandments mm -hmm. and abide in his love. Because he kept the commandments of the Mosai, he abode in the Mosai God's love. So when we keep the commandments, when we keep his commandments, guess what? We abide in the love of Christ. Go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. Stop right there. That my what? That my joy might remain in you. He says, these things have I spoken unto you. What did he speak unto us? Give me John 6, 63. You know what? Give me John 5 first. John 5, 46. John chapter 5, verse 46. The things that he's spoken unto us. John chapter 5, verse 46. Watch this. The book of John chapter 5, verse 46. 
For had he believed Moses, he would have believed me, for he wrote of me. You see, Moses wrote of Christ, right? Go ahead. But if he believe not his writings, how shall he believe my words? Because the words of Christ was the words of Moses. Now, next chapter now, John 6, 63. These are the things that Christ spoke unto us. Read that. The book of John chapter 6, verse 63. Go ahead. It is spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Come on. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Meaning they quicken. They change you. They are life. Meaning what? They give you a new life. Okay. Now, go back to John 15. John 15 verse 11. The book of John chapter 15 verses 11. These things have I spoken unto you. Stop right there. These things have I spoken unto you, meaning to keep his commandments, right? And those commandments, they give life to us. They bring change to our life as we apply. These things have I spoken unto you. Go ahead. That my joy might remain in you. Read. And that your joy might be full. You see what he's saying? That my joy might remain in you. What was his joy? The keeping of the commandments and what he did for us. You understand? Hmm. Then he says, and that your joy might be full. So when he says, fulfill ye my joy, guess what? You, you keep the commandments. Because when you keep the commandments, one of the fruits of the spirit is joy. You understand? Glad you're going to have joy in your life. That your joy might be full because the joy you got, the joy that is going to be filled in you is the laws of God, the love of Christ. That's the joy that is going to be filled in you when you keep the commandments. Next verse. Go ahead. This is my commandment mm -hmm. that ye love one another as I have loved you. Because we must carry one another's burdens like we read in Galatians 6 because Christ carried our burdens. Read. Greater love hath no man known more than this. No, no, no. Read that right. The book of John chapter 15 verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You see what he's saying? That a man laid down his life for his friend. He's going to tell you the friendship you must have. Remember, don't forget now. In Sirach 20 verse 16, it says, The fool saith, I have no friends. But you are in the truth. You have no friends. Read that verse again. Verse 13. The book of John chapter 15 verse 13. Go ahead. My love has no man than this. Mm -hmm. That a man laid down his life for his friends. That the man, he's talking about himself. He laid down his life for his friends. Now he's going to tell you what is a friend. The friends he's making reference to. He's going to tell you. Keep going. Next verse. Henceforth, I call you not servants. No, 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 no. Verse 14. Come on, stay focused. The book of John chapter 15 verse 14. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. What did Christ command us? What did Christ command us? Read, jump up to verse 10. This is what he commanded us. You know what? Read verse 10, then we're going to jump to verse 12. Read that. The book of John chapter 15 verse 10. Mm -hmm. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Read. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Read verse 12 now. Come on. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. So now read verse 14 now. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 14. Go ahead. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you, you see, you see what he said? Ye are my friends if 
ye do whatsoever I command you. You are my friends if you do whatsoever you are co I command you. What did he command us? That we must abide in his love, we, we, which is what? The keeping of the commandments. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. If we want to abide in Christ's love, we must keep his commandments as he abode in, as he abides in the most high God's love because he kept the most high God's commandments. We must do the same. So it says the friendship is only based on keeping of the commandments. You keep, and guess what? When you keep the commandments of the Mosa, you apply, you have the spirit of joy. You can understand. I'm not supposed to be depressed because I have brothers and sisters in the truth that the Lord has what? The Lord has called into this truth and the Lord has brought them together with me. Guess what? The Lord has brought you in this truth for a reason. Now you're surrounded by brothers and sisters that you never knew you had. Now you have them, you are still taking for granted that, eh, you know, it's in the truth. I'll always see them. But you always depress and say, you say what? I have no friends. But the Lord has brought friends for you. You lost friends in the world. The Lord said, don't worry. I'm going to give you friends in the truth. They're real friends now. But you still don't see, you, don't, you still don't see the grace of the Lord in that. You still don't see it. You see what I'm saying? Watch this. Give me that in Matthew chapter 19. I have not forgotten about Sirach 20. I'm still, I'm still on the point. I have not forgotten my point. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 19, verses 29. Go ahead. And everyone that had, and everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Man, this Bible is beautiful. This, this, Bible, this Bible is a true book. Let me say that again. This Bible right here, man, no oh, praise to the Most High. Read verse 29 again. That's some beautiful stuff me? right there. Chapter 19, verse 29. Go ahead. Everyone and everyone that had forsaken houses. Stop right there. And everyone that had forsaken houses, meaning you lost a house, you lost your house, and all of that, meaning you used to you used to be well off in the world. Now you come into this truth, then the Lord starts to take those things away from you because those things were not for the benefit of Israel, it was for your benefit and your benefit only. Now, these fiery trials are coming against you. You start to lose those wealth, the wealth that you used to have. You, you, houses. Then it says brethren. Okay, meaning what? Your own brothers and sisters that you grew up with, you lose them. Okay? And the ones in the world too. Or sisters, the ones that you grew up with and those that you used to know in the world. Or, or father. Or mother. Because your mother and your father, they say, listen, this stuff that you are dealing with now, Please, we don't understand. We disowning you. Okay? Or wife. Hmm. Could you read that part again? Or what? After mother. Or wife. Or wife. This is some heavy stuff, man. Go ahead. Or children. Or what? Or children. Or children. Wife or children. Go ahead. Or lands. Or lands. So lands, meaning you, you had land and all that, multiple lands, hectares and hectares. Read. For my name's sake. For the name of Christ, meaning the keeping of the commandments. Read. Shall receive an hundredfold. Shall receive what? An hundredfold. You shall receive an hundredfold. That's what this is Christ speaking right here. Out of his mouth. Go ahead. And shall inherit everlasting life. You're going to get the kingdom. Now, this is beautiful. Now, let's go to Sirach 20 now, verse 16. Now that we've read all that. Okay, Sirach 20, verse 16. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20, verse 16. Go ahead. The fool says, I have no friends. 
Because if you still have the mindset in this truth with this, you still have this mindset right here, you are a fool. Because the friends are the ones that are, if the Lord will bring you lost the friends in the, in the world, you lost mothers, fathers, wives, children in the world. The Lord said, don't worry about that. I'm going to add more. I'm going to give you a hundredfold. You lost your mother, don't worry. I'm going to give you a mother in the truth. You lost your father, I'm going to give you a father in the truth. You lost a brother, a sister, a wife, children. I'm going to give you those in. The... Listen, the Musa is that we're saving a just God. Understand that. Okay? You, we are saving a just God. Keep going. I, I have no thank for all my good deeds. I have no thank, meaning nobody is saying, nobody is, is thanking me for all my good deeds. Because guess what? He says, I have no thank for all my good deeds because you have no friends. I think that's what you say. Read. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 16. The fool saith, I have no friends. I have no thank for all my good deeds. Because you know what he say? When he say, I have no thank for all my good deeds, because I give you have no friends. Because in your mind, you have no friends. So therefore, you have no thank for all your good deeds. Because the friends are the ones that are supposed to thank you for your good deeds. Go ahead. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. So basically, you just be complaining. You don't have that spirit of joy. You see that thing? You don't have that spirit of joy. So this is what you'll be telling yourself. But, but you are a fool. Because Christ said, you lost friends and, and you lost friends. You lost family members and all that. He says, don't worry, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you a hundredfold. Not some, a hundredfold. But a fool don't think like that. You understand? A fool don't think like that. Because you don't see, you, you see, but you don't perceive what you are seeing. You, you don't perceive what you are seeing. Your eyes and your ears are blocked. The Lord has blocked that understanding from you. Why? Because you don't have the spirit of joy. You don't praise the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You understand? You are one foot in and one foot out. The Lord sees that spirit and says, you, you are one foot in and one foot out. You don't believe this. When you get your mind right, when you decide, okay, 100% I'm in this, then the Lord says, okay, now you have my attention now. You have my attention. Let me deal with you now. Okay, watch this. Go back to Sirach now, chapter 30. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 and verse 20. You know what? Mm. Yeah, verse 24. Read verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verses 24. Go ahead. Envy and wrath shorten the life. You see what he's saying? Envy and wrath shorten the life. Meaning what? Because the spirit of envy is the spirit of depression because you wish you were somewhere, you wish you were, you, 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 you wish you were that brother. You wish you were that sister. So that's envy. But you're not realizing that the Lord has given every man their gift according to how he saw fit. So you better be content with what the Lord has given you and what? And multiply that. That's called patience. That's called faith. You see what thing? So you see, a lot of us, we don't think about those things. You're, we're, you don't think about that. You're always looking at, I wish I could do, I could, I could understand the scriptures like this, brother. I wish I could, could, could. But you're not, because there's nothing wrong with saying that. The only problem comes in when you wish you could so you can surpass him. That's when the problem comes in. That's where envy comes in. So that's not righteous envy. That's evil envy. It says, and wrath shorteneth life because that's going to make you angry. You become depressed. You do things irrationally and so forth. He it says it's going to shorten your life. You are destroying your own self. Go ahead. Envy and wrath shorten the life. Mm-hmm. And carefulness brings age before the time. Carefulness, meaning what? Worry. Worry will bring age before the time. You'll age quicker. 
and carefulness bringeth age before the time. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna grow old quickly. You understand? Because you are not applying what the Lord is saying, so you can receive that spirit of joy as the most high God has commanded. You understand? Watch this. Give me Galatians 5. Galatians 5 is 22. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit is love. So love is the fruit of the spirit. We know what love is. Love is the keeping of God's commandments. Read that in Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 17. But let's see what love is. Okay. It says the fruit of the spirit is love. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 17. Go ahead. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. The hair is wisdom. Go ahead. And the care of discipline is love. When you care about discipline and where do you get discipline from? Keeping of the commandments of the Most High, you're going to get discipline. It says the care of discipline is love. Go ahead. And love is the keeping of her laws. And love is the keeping of her laws. That's what love is. And love is the keeping of God's commandments. Go ahead. And love is the keeping of her laws. Mm -hmm. And the keeping thee unto her laws is the, is the assurance of incorruption. So it says, and giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption, meaning what? Immortality. You are assured of everlasting life and immortality, living forever. You understand? That's what love is. And love is going to, is love, which is keeping of God's commandments, will guarantee incorruption, meaning what? Immortality. That's what he's saying right there. So love, which is keeping of God's commandments, that's a gift. That's the fruit of the spirit. You understand? Go ahead. Go back to Galatians 5, verse 22. Yeah, definitely. The tonight's class is called the spirit of joy. No, no. Have joy in your life. That's tonight's class. Okay, that's tonight's topic. Okay, I'm not going to go over the class that I planned. Okay, let's read that. Galatians 5, verse 22. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. But... The fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love, which is keeping of God's laws. Go ahead. Joy. Joy. Mm. You see that part right there? That's what we've been going over this whole class. Joy. The Spirit of joy. That's a gift right there. And you see this Spirit right here? Joy. This is one of the hardest things for brothers, men and women to do in Israel. I've seen this before. I'm, I'm looking at it. Joy is one of the hardest things for men and women to do in this truth. Joy. But in the world, it wasn't difficult to do it. But in the truth, it is. It doesn't make any sense. You understand? Read the part again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Mm -hmm. Joy. Joy. Stop right there. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. We're going to start at verse 22. We're going to read down. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 22. Watch this. Now, King Solomon is going to explain wisdom here. And the, the effects of wisdom and the impact it has in your life. You understand? You know what? Before we get that, hmm, give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 7. Watch this. So let's deal with wisdom. Because wisdom is a spirit. Okay. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I prayed and understanding was given me. So he prayed to the Lord and understanding was given him. Go ahead. I called upon God. And the spirit of wisdom came to me. 
You see that thing right there? And the spirit of wisdom came to me. So wisdom is a spirit. Wisdom is a spirit. The spirit of wisdom came to him. Because this goes well with 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, Dan, when the Lord asked King Solomon, when he visited him, it says, ask what I shall give thee. He asked for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding first and foremost. Okay, let's go back now. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 22. Wisdom is a spirit, okay? And it's a fruit of the spirit. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 22. Go ahead. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things. You see that thing? Wisdom is the worker of all things. Wisdom is in everything. Go ahead. For in her is an understanding spirit. Stop right there. Go back to where we read it again. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. Verse 22 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. So wisdom taught him the following these things that we're about to read. Go ahead. For in her is an understanding spirit. So because in her, in wisdom, you're going to find an understanding spirit. The spirit of understanding. Wisdom will give you the spirit of understanding. Go ahead. Holy. Meaning separate. Go ahead. One holy. One only. You cannot mix it with something else. Go ahead. One only. Mm -hmm. Manifold. It's in itself. Read. Subtle. You see, the wisdom of the Lord, it says it's subtle. You understand? It's subtle. Read. Subtle. Lively. Stop right there. What did he say? Lively. Lively. You see, you, you ever see those, those, those spirits? It's like they just, they just this dead dog. You know? It's like their spirit is just dead. They suck the life out of you. It says, lively. For this spirit, you, for you to have this spirit, uh, to, to have that spirit, the lively spirit, guess what? You must have the spirit of joy to have this. And wisdom will teach you that. You understand? Read. Clear. It's clear. This is not confused. It's not confused. There's no confusion when wisdom is around. It's just, it's clear to understand. You understand? Simple to understand. Keep the commandments, get the kingdom. You see how clear that is? Simple. Keep the commandments, pray for the spirit of joy, apply yourself. Simple. Go ahead. Undefiled. Undefiled. You can't defile the spirit of wisdom. You can't. Okay, go ahead. Undefiled. Plain. Plain. It's plain. It is is not complicated to understand. It's plain. Read. Not subject to hurt. Not subject to hurt. Because if you are subject to hurt, that means you don't have the helmet of the Most High God on you. Because when it says subject to hurt, meaning what? Every little thing is hurting you. Every little thing is just emotional about everything. Is not subject to hurt. Go ahead. Loving the things that is good. You see what you see that what the spirit of wisdom does is it says wisdom loves the thing that is good. And if you have that wisdom, you're gonna love the things that are good. Romans 7, verse 12. We're coming back here. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Let's read that. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So the laws of God, they are holy, meaning they are separate. The commandments, they are holy, they are separate. And just, 
and they are good. You understand? So if he says loving the things that is good, meaning you love the commandments, you love the law, because you know they are just and they are good. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 7. Verse 22 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 22. Go ahead. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an, understand, is an understanding spirit. Go ahead. Holy. One only. Uh -huh. Manifold. Subtle. Lively. Clear. Undefiled. Plain. Not subject to hurt. Mm -hmm. Loving the things that is good. Loving the thing that is good. Meaning the commandments of God. Go ahead. Quick. Which cannot be let it, ready to do good. You see that part right there? It says, which cannot be let it, meaning which cannot be stopped. The wisdom of the Lord can't be stopped. You understand? It can be. It says, which, which cannot be let it, ready to do good. Now, keep going. Kind to man. Kind to man. Wisdom of the Mosai is kind to man. Read. Steadfast. Meaning steadfast. Meaning what? The wisdom of the Lord will teach you discipline. You're going to discipline yourself to apply. You're going to discipline yourself to have the spirit of joy. Because the spirit of evil can jump on you if you don't fight to have that spirit of joy. Because a lot of brothers and sisters, they don't have the spirit of joy. They are always depressed all the time. You talk to them, you just you get even more depressed. You understand? You can't crack a joke. No. Go ahead. Sure. It's sure. Spirit. Meaning what? The spirit of the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom will give you the spirit of surety. You are sure. Confidence. Go ahead. Free from care. Free from care. You don't care about what's going on in the world, meaning the things that go against this. But listen, your job is to apply what is written because you know it cannot be stopped. Read. Free from care. Having all power. Having all power. Because guess what? Wisdom of the Most High God gives us the power to change. That's what born, being born again is all about. The wisdom of the Lord gives you power to change. To let go of that depressed, grimy, always complaining type of spirit you used to be in the world when you come into this truth you get rid of that you take upon you the you put on the whole armor of god you put on christ you keep his commandments which will give you the spirit of joy and gladness in this truth go ahead having all power seeing overseeing all things overseeing all things meaning managing and things Go ahead. And going through all understanding. Read. Pure. Uh -huh. And most subtle. Spirits. He says the wisdom, wisdom of the Lord, he says, guess what? He says, is a worker of all things. He says, is pure, is most subtle spirit. Go ahead. Verse 24. Watch this. For wisdom. Is more moving than any motion. Wisdom is a movement in itself. Wisdom is a movement. You understand? Go ahead. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. So wisdom of the Lord goeth and passeth through all things. Read. And the im. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 24. No, verse For 25. Wisdom. Verse 25, come on. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 25. For she is the breath of the power of God. So wisdom is the breath of the power of God, what, which was given to Adam, which is given to us this day in this last day. That's why we can remember that we are the children of Israel. We are not duckies no more. Go ahead. And a pure influence flowing mm. from the glory of the Almighty. 
You see what wisdom is? Wisdom is a pure influence. Wisdom has a pure influence. Meaning what? Wisdom does not have hidden agendas. Wisdom is a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Wisdom has a pure influence. The pure influence that we have to in, to in the minds of our people is what? Change. Get rid of the old men or the old women, keep the commandments, and be a new creature in Christ. You used to, you used to be disrespectful, now you're not, you're not anymore. You used to be loud as a sister, now you're not anymore. You're quiet, you have the spirit of joy, you're respectful, okay? You used to smoke weed, now you're not doing it anymore, okay? You used to bold your head, you used to sleep around, you used to watch porn. You don't do that stuff no more. Why? Because you're an Israelite. You have, you have responsibility. You understand what it means to be an Israelite, that you must be what? You must be honorable. You must have a good name because you have a nation to build. That's the mindset when you come into this truth. Sisters as well. Go ahead. They can, therefore, can no default thing fall into her. And no default thing can fall into wisdom. You cannot defile wisdom. It's pure. Okay, read. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light. Read. The unspotted mirror of the power of God. So wisdom is the unspotted. Meaning when it says unspotted, is with me is what? Is without spot. Without blemish. Meaning there's nothing wrong with God's commandments. There's nothing wrong with the wisdom of the Most High. It says the wisdom of the Most High is the unspotted mirror of the power of God. Go ahead. Some heavy stuff right here. Go ahead. And being but one. No, 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 no. You didn't, fi you didn't finish verse 26. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 26. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God. And the image of his goodness. So wisdom is the image of the most high God's goodness. Go ahead. And being but one, she can do all things. Mm -hmm. And remaining in herself. Because it's infinite. Well, that's why it says manifold in verse 22. It says one only manifold. He says, being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself. You can't finish Watch this. Let me prove that. Give me Psalms real quick. Give me Psalms 147. You can't finish the wisdom of the Most High God. You cannot finish that thing. Um, Psalms 147. Read that. The book of Psalms 147, verse 5. Go ahead. Great is our Lord. Mm -hmm. Great power. His understanding is infinite. His understanding is infinite. You can't finish the level of wisdom that the Lord has. It's infinite. It says remaining in herself. Okay? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7. Verse 27 again. Chapter 7, verse 27. Read. And being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself. Stop right there. Hold this. Wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 18 now. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 8 verses 18. Come on. And great pleasure it is. To have her friendship. You see. You see. It's a, it's a great, it's great pleasure to have. The friendship of wisdom. Great pleasure it is to have her friendship. This is also a metaphor for a wife you see that thing go ahead and in the works of her hands are infinite riches that's it right there in the works of her hands are infinite riches the riches that comes with wisdom they are infinite the riches that comes with the world they are finite you understand because they are coming from a finite source but the riches that comes with wisdom they are infinite because they are coming from an infinite source Infinite. He says he's from the everlasting. Without beginning, without no end. The ancient of days. Without day. We, meaning what? Outside of time. That's some heavy stuff right there. This is the wisdom you want. 
This is the type of friendship you want. This is the type of joy you want because that joy is everlasting also. The spirit of joy, the spirit of um, gladness is everlasting because it's coming from the majesty on high. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 27 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 27. Go ahead. Being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself. Come on. She maketh all things new. That's the key right there. She maketh all things new. Give me First Samuel 10 verse 6. She, wisdom will make all things to be new. You understand? Wisdom will, will make, will renew your spirit. If you used to be that person that is always upset, that's always sad, you understand? Over sad countenance, always depressed, sucking the life up out of everyone around you, them days are over. Okay? First Samuel 10 verse 6. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. You're going to be turned into somebody else. A new man, a new spirit, the Lord will give unto you. This, that spirit will come with this, will have what? The spirit of joy. Because that's the topic for tonight. You understand? The Lord will give you that spirit of joy. And that spirit of joy is going to be a, is going to heal somebody else also. Because you came in, you didn't have that spirit of joy. You apply yourself, you get that spirit of joy. That's a gift from the Most High. Guess what? Somebody else comes in, they have that grimy spirit. Your job is to help them through it. To show them, listen, sis, listen, bruh, I was there before. I used to be depressed and all that. But now I'm among, I'm among the brethren. You understand? I have the spirit of joy because I know I don't have to worry. If I have problems, I seek for help. And they help me because why? We are a family. We, have, we are all we have. We have one another. You understand? And the Lord is with us. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 27 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verses 27. And being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. All things, meaning everything about you is going to be completely brand new. Nobody going to recognize you. Go ahead. And in all ages, entering into holy souls. In all ages, from the days of old unto this day, from old to young, from the old generations to the new generation, he says what? And in all ages, entering into holy souls. Wisdom enters into holy souls, meaning those that keep the commandments, wisdom will dwell in that spirit. Go ahead. And in all ages, entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of God and prophets. Because guess what? When you keep God's commandments, you be, it says what? Wisdom will make you to be a friend of God. You remember Abraham was a friend of God. Because Abraham, our forefather, he had wisdom. Wisdom entered into his holy soul. And he what? That wisdom that entered into his holy soul made him to be friends with the Lord. Some heavy stuff. Go ahead. She maketh them friends of God and prophets. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth in wisdom. No, no, no. Read that right. Not in wisdom. With wisdom. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 28. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. So, that, now, this is very clear. It says, for because God loveth none. You see how clear, you see how simple, uh, you see how direct that is? God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. So, if you don't dwell with wisdom, the Lord don't love you. Now, that's heavy. If you don't dwell with wisdom, because what is, what is wisdom? Sarag 19 verse 20. Let's see what wisdom is. Okay, read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 19 verses 20. 
the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. And the knowledge of, the, of his omnipotency. Because the knowledge of the Lord is omnipotent. Because he's omnipotent. Okay? Meaning he's everywhere all at once. Now, but what I want to show you here is wisdom is when you perform the laws of God. When you apply God's commandments, you get wisdom. The Lord says, I, he's, he, loves, he loves you at that point. But when you don't apply, the Lord says, I don't love you. Because if you don't apply, that means you don't change. And if you don't change, that means who are you going to help to also change? So you don't care about the people. You don't care about his people. You see what I'm saying? Because that's how, go, how deep it goes. If you don't want to change, that means you don't care about your people. Because the reason why you are called in is so you can change. So that somebody else that has the same problem you got, they also can change because you will guide them through it. That's why I said gather yourself together. Because we'll be coming, we'll all be coming from all different works of life. That's what he's saying right there. Now, this is some heavy stuff. Wisdom will bring you joy, okay? And wisdom is a gift of the Lord. Now, Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 18 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 18. Watch this. And great pleasure. It is to have a friendship. Mm -hmm. And in the works of our hands are infinite riches. Infinite riches. Infinite riches. Infinite riches in terms of wisdom. Infinite riches in terms of wealth. Okay, go ahead. And, and power. Hold on. Infinite riches in terms of wealth. Power. Living forever. You see that thing? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding all encompassing go ahead and in the works of our hands are infinite riches and in the exercise of of conference with her prudence so when you con he says in the exercise of conference with her because when you're conferencing you're conversing right it says if you converse with wisdom you're gonna you're gonna be prudent meaning what you're gonna be extremely wise go ahead and in the exercise of conference with her, prudence. And in talking with her, a good report. Because how do you talk with wisdom? You apply. You understand? You're going to get a good report. Read. I went about seeking how to take it to me. You see that thing? Because you, you, want, you wanted to, that was the first thing that you wanted. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 21. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except God gave her me. You see what this, the, you see, what I want to show you here is that wisdom is a gift from God. Okay, it's a gift. Read. And that's, and that was a point of wisdom also, to know whose gift she was. Because she's the gift of the Lord. Read. I prayed unto the Lord and besought him. And with my whole heart, I said. Now watch this. That's it on that. Give me wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 9. Now this is some heavy verse that we're about to read. Pay close attention. Okay, watch this. You know what? Hmm. Wisdom of Solomon 9. Read wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 15. Start of verse 14. Wisdom. Read 14. Read 14 and 15 together. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. So that's what we, we were reading in Sirach 20. You understand? Is it Sirach 20? No, Sirach, no, Sirach 30, verse 23 down. That you must what? You must, you must get rid of. He says, remove, you remove, far, you re, you remove sorrow far from thee. So here it says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable because we are mortal. Our thought is misery. You are in misery and pain. But the Lord has given us a solution. You don't have to live your life like that no more in misery and pain when you have the Bible with you, when you have the Holy Scriptures 
You understand? To comfort you. You don't have to be living like that. You don't have to have a miserable thought. And our devices, meaning our plans, are but uncertain because we are mortal men. Read. And our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. The corruptible body. The corruptible body is the fleshly body, is the mortal body. It presses down the soul because it wants to be for it, it, the, the flesh. You understand that the lust of the flesh, the flesh is always lusting for something. So it is what is messing up with your spiritual growth. Go ahead. And the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. The earthly tabernacle, that's what? That's our fleshly body. That's our weak body, our mortal flesh. It says the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Your mind is always wondering. Your mind is here. The next minute is there. You are always, your mind is always racing. You understand? Because why? Your mind is not stayed on the Lord. So the Lord can give you peace of mind. Watch this. This is what wisdom does. Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 9. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 9. But wisdom delivered from pain those that are tended upon her. You see what wisdom does? Read that again verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. You see what wisdom will deliver you from? It says, wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon him. So the wisdom of the Lord will deliver you from pain, sorrow of mind, stress. So all the pain that you have, that you have experienced, that you are still experiencing, the wisdom of the Most High God will deliver you from all that if you apply. If you want that pain to go away, you must apply what is written. And that evil spirit will leave you because it's an evil spirit. Misery and pain, a stress, burying yourself and counseling yourself with your own mind. That's a demon. That's not the spirit of the Lord. That's the spirit of Satan. You understand? Satan like chaos and confusion. The most high God is about joy, peace. You understand? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, purity, clarity, plainness. Like we read in Wisdom of Solomon 7. So wisdom is going to deliver you from pain. And it, guess what? You will receive that spirit of joy. Because the fruit of wisdom is a spirit. And this wisdom, which is a spirit, is going to give you what? Joy. Which we all are supposed to have that spirit of joy. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right here. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here and break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ that we may have life because he gave us life. All right. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praise to the Most High. All praises, all praises. That's a... Uh...